In this Oracle Mobile Cloud Service episode today, for Android developers, we're going to look through the various storage API examples using the native APIs from the MCS Mobile Client SDK. Thanks for joining me. I'm Chris Muir from the Oracle Mobile Platform team. Now, in previous episodes, we've discussed in depth the MCS Storage API, including how to create collections and objects, and we even examined curl examples for calling the Storage API remotely, but that wasn't a real mobile application, you'd agree. So in this episode, we're going to look at how Android developers can call the Storage API with the help of the MCS Mobile Client SDK to greatly simplify working with the Storage API remotely. Now, rather than just looking through the Java APIs in the SDK in a dry fashion, maybe you can read the Java docs for that if that's what you want, let's use our previous Spell War app examples where lower or primary school students use our spelling game to upload, say, private user preferences and avatar pictures into an isolated collection, and maybe share scores on a shared MCS scoreboard collection too. Now, we're going to assume for this episode that the shared and isolated MCS collections already exist, you've already created them in the MCS UI, and our focus here in this episode is purely on using the Android Mobile Client SDK platform API capabilities. So, our goal is to achieve the following tasks with the storage API in Android using the SDK based around our Spell Wars example. With our fictitious Little Joe mobile user from our previous episodes, we will first determine for Little Joe if the user preferences isolated collection exists, and by inference, if he has the privileges to work on that collection. Then, for the same user, Little Joe will determine if they've already uploaded an avatar picture. Now, assuming Little Joe has, we'll then delete it and upload another one. And finally, we'll download the last five scores from the shared collection to show in the app scoreboard. Now, before you can actually call the Storage API SDK classes, your Android app must authenticate the remote MCS mobile backend. And we cover this in a lot of detail in previous episodes. We're not going to go over all the details again. But for the purpose of this demonstration, we will show you that we've wired up a button on our screen within our Android app that will call the authentication code. So for demonstration purposes here, here's a really rudimentary piece of code where I've assigned a non-click listener within our onCreate method to the button. So returning to the authentication code, for the authentication code, we need to import the following classes into our Android Java activity class handling the login. Then we make the following calls where the first line defines which mobile backend you want to authorize against. In this case, the default mobile backend defined in your Android Oracle Mobile Cloud config XML file. Then a call to authorization.authenticate makes the actual call with little Joe's username and password and passes in the callback handle to determine what to do if the call succeeds or fails. Now, again, as you can see, for demonstration purposes here, we're cheating and we're essentially hard coding little Joe's username and password. You would give a login screen normally to capture these details. So, assuming that the user hits our login button with the hard coded credentials for little Joe and the authentication succeeds, we're then free to continue to access the storage APIs, which we wanted to look at for this particular episode. So let's return to our original goal to test the storage APIs based on our Spell Wars example. Before coding the API calls, let's quickly create another button, which when touched will call our storage API code, essentially giving us a handy place to put the following storage API calls. Alrighty, so now we're ready to complete our first storage API call where we want to test if the user preferences collection exists in MCS. So let's look at the storage API SDK code to do this. First, we need to import the following three MCS classes to work with the range of storage SDK classes that are available to us. The use of these classes will be explained as we work through the following examples. So from here, we make the following calls. The first line gives us access to the storage handler, essentially a singleton for accessing the storage APIs for a specific mobile backend. As you can see in this code, we're using the default mobile backend that's available to us. 
then we use the service proxy method to retrieve a handle on the storage Java object instance. Essentially, this is the live point of the storage API for the defined mobile backend on the MCS side. The second line with a call to storage storage collection attempts to gain access to the specific storage collection we're interested in, user preferences. Note the name is case specific and must match what you define in the MCS user interface. There are also alternative ways using the storage class to retrieve a collection. These allow you to retrieve an isolated collection from another user based on their name or ID, assuming you have the read all or read write all privileges. For us, the get storage collection method is satisfactory because little Joe is accessing his own isolated collection of user preferences. So from here, if the get storage collection method returns null, the collection doesn't exist or we don't have privileges to access it. If the method returns a not null result, we know the collection exists and we're fine to continue working with the storage API. Our next goal is to determine if little Joe has already uploaded an avatar picture to his isolated user preferences collection in MCS. To do this, we extend our previous code. And with the user preferences collection, we can use the method contains, passing in the object ID to test if the object exists in the collection. In this example, we're passing in the object ID avatar.png. From here, assuming the object exists, we can download it if we want and then continue working with it. Now from here, we wanted to show you how to delete the existing avatar picture. So let's investigate how we do that. We can achieve this by calling user preferences, that is the collection, dot remove, passing in the object ID. Or alternatively, we can call the overloaded method user preferences dot remove and then pass in the object itself. Right, having deleted the avatar picture, we now want to upload a new avatar picture for little Joe. Now, admittedly, we could have just actually uploaded a new picture straight away and it would have overridden the other picture with a put command, but we wanted to show you the delete and then uploading a brand new object. So in order to do this, let's have a look at the signatures of the storage object constructors we can use to create a new avatar picture, essentially a new object within our Android application. As you can see, the storage object requires not only an ID and a content type indicating the MIME type of what you're about to upload, but it also optionally takes a byte array or an input stream, which is essentially the payload of the object itself. So in our case, what we could do to upload a picture is either obtain an image stored as a byte array or an input stream, and then call the storage object constructor passing in the byte array or alternatively convert the byte array to an input stream, then do the same. And then finally, call our user preferences dot put object method, which will upload the object with the same object ID, in our case, the avatar object ID. Alternatively, if we're not so concerned about the object ID, we can call user preferences dot post with the object, and MCS will assign a generated object ID in this case. To retrieve the assigned object ID, we then just call user preferences .get ID or any of the other getter and setter methods on the storage object if we so desire. Now returning to our original goals, our final goal is to retrieve the five most recent score loads uploaded to the share scoreboard collection. So let's have a look at how we do that now. As before, we first need to fetch the storage singleton which then gives us the scoreboard collection by a call to the get storage collection method. From here, we can retrieve the scorecards from the scoreboard collection. But before doing so, rather than just downloading them blindly, we can call on the collection the get etag method. Assuming we've called this etag method previously and stored the result, we can now compare the previous copy of the etag against this new copy. If they're the same, this implies the scoreboard hasn't changed since you last accessed it. So any scorecards you downloaded are the, already the most up-to-date copy, saving you an unnecessary and potentially slow call to retrieve them across a cellular network. However, if the e-tags have changed, this means your copy of the scoreboard is out of date and you can download an updated copy. To do this, the collection object provides the get method with the following signature, essentially taking three parameters, offset, limit, and all objects. This method allows you to get all the objects between the offset and limit values that you specified in a paginated fashion. 
So in our case, we want the first five objects. So we set these to zero and five respectively. Now, if we wanted to start paginating through the records, you can increment the offset and limit parameters by five. So as an example, to page through another two set of records, you would do the following two calls. Alternatively, if you want all the objects, set these to zero and some large number otherwise. For the final all objects boolean parameter in this call, this is essentially ignored if the collection you're working on is shared. However, for an isolated collection, if all objects are set to false, you only get the objects from your own isolated collection. If for an isolated collection this is set to true, and the user account has the read write all privileges, this operation will return objects from the user's isolated collection and everybody else's too. Right, that's it. As you can see, manipulating and working with the storage API via the MCS mobile client SDK for Android is really quite simple and should make mobile developers on the Android platform very productive when working with mobile cloud service. Thanks for joining us in this video. Hope you'll join us for the next video in the Oracle Mobile Cloud Service Series very soon.